Okay? So now, the faith, about the faith, the, question, the, the prophet was, was questioned about this question. Okay? The faith. If the faith is the first element and the, the most important element in Islam, so now, what does the faith consist of? Okay? And the prophet, when he was quite when he was questioned about the faith, يعني أن النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم لما سئل عن الإسلام والإيمان والإخوان فقال الإيمان أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ولقائه ورسله وبالبعث. The prophet questioned when he was questioned about this question. Someone questioned him about the faith, and he said. The faith consists of six pillars. The faith consists of six pillars. And you have to believe in all the six pillars in order to get the complete faith. Okay? You have to believe in all the six pillars in order to get in order to get the complete and the exact faith. Okay? And the six pillars are God says that or the prophet says that you have to believe first in God. You have to believe first in God. Okay? You have to believe first in God. This is the first element. You have to believe in God. You have to believe in God. You must believe in God. And don't play with the word here. If the prophet says that you have to believe in God, but he didn't say you have to say that I believe in God. Okay? And this is why I get says in chapter number 2, verse number 8, that there are several people who say we believe in God and in the rapture. God says that they are not among believers. They are not among believers. What does it mean? It means that they say things from their tongue which are not in their heads. Okay? They say things from their tongues which are not in their heads. For example, if I say here that I have become now the president of Mali, the president of Mali. I have said this, but it doesn't mean that I have become it exactly. If you say, for example, I believe in God, I believe in God, so it can, it is possible that you believe exactly in God, and it is also possible that you do, that you don't believe in God exactly. This is why God says that they try to be to deceive God and to deceive the exact or the good believers. They try to deceive God and to deceive the good believers. Okay? So you have to believe first in God. This is the first element of the faith. The second element, you have to believe in His angels. You must believe in His angels. You have to believe in His angels. This is the second element. The third element, you have to believe in His scriptures. All the scriptures. The Quran, the Gospel, the, 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 the Torah, and so on and so on. You have to believe in all the scriptures of God. This is the third element of the faith. You have to believe in the scriptures. And don't say that I'm not going to believe in the, in the Gospel because the Gospel has not been revived to, to, to Muslims. Or so you have to believe. And if you don't believe in the Gospel, it means that your faith is not complete. And if you disbelieve in anything, for example, you disbelieve in in gospel, so it means here that you have disbelief in the Quran. Okay? You have to believe in all the scriptures of God. This is the third element of the faith. The fourth element of the faith, you have to believe you have to believe in the meeting of God of the hereafter. Okay? The meeting of God or the hereafter. And this day is the day you are going to meet God. This is the day God is going to rewire you. This is the day God is going to, to, to inform you of what you did. This is the day or that day God will rewire you. God will give you your reward. And God will inform you about what you did. Okay? So you have to believe in this day. You have to believe 
in that day the meeting of God. This is the fourth element. Now, the fifth element, you have to believe in all the prophets of God. You have to believe in all the prophets of God, from prophet Adam to prophet Mary. Okay? You have to believe exactly and uh, truly in all the prophets of God. And don't say here that I'm not going to believe in, 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 in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ has not been revived to Muslims or I don't know. So you have to believe in all the prophets of God. You have to believe in all the prophets of God. Okay? This is the fifth element of the faith. The last one, you have to believe in the resurrection. You must believe in the resurrection. You must believe in the resurrection. This is the last one. Okay? Now, these are the pillars of faith. And you have to believe exactly in all these pillars in order to get the faith wanted by God. And the pillars were what the prophet listed from the, 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 the hadith. Okay? The pillars, the six pillars, are what the prophet has lifted from or what the prophet has lifted from the, the, the hadith. Okay? And the six pillars also have been lifted by God in his Quran chapter number two verse number 177 in chapter number 2 verse number 177 in chapter number 2 verse number 177 the Surah Al-Baqarah ayat Mia wa sabi'a wa sabi'un nina qawlihi ta'ala laysa dur an tuwaldu wujuhakum kibla al-mashriq wal-maghrib ولكن بر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب ونبيين ليس بر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن بر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب ونبيين The guess is that in chapter number 2 verse number 177 In chapter number 2 verse number 177 guess is that Righteousness doesn't consist of your of faces to our east and west. But righteous is he who believes in God in the last day, in the angels, in the scriptures, and in the prophets. In chapter number 2, verse number 177, God says that righteousness doesn't consist of your of faces to our east and west. But righteous is he who believes in God in the last day, in the scriptures, or in who believes in God, the last day, the angels, the scriptures, and the prophets. Okay? So, what do you remark here? When the prophet says that the faith consists of believing in God, in his angels, in his scriptures, in his meeting, the scripture, and the, the prophets, and in the resurrection, and God says here that righteousness doesn't consist of turning your faces throughout the east and the west. But righteous is, is he who believes in God in the last day, in the angels, in the scripture, and in the prophets. What do you remark here? You realize that there are the same plots which have been listed by God and his prophets. Okay? And you mustn't play with something which is listed by God and his prophets like this. It is according to the same order. According to the same order. And you mustn't play with this question. Okay? So this is what the herbs or what the herbs might play. The role that the herbs might play. You have to believe in all these plots. And you mustn't deceive yourself by saying that I believe but exactly you don't believe. Okay? And if you if you betray or if you betray yourself you must accept that we betray you. But you mustn't accept to betray yourself. Okay? You have to be serious and answer try yourself.
don't say things that you have not. Okay? So now, after having believed in all the pillars, in the second state now, you are going now to, you are going now to show this to people, to Muslims. Because if you say that you believe in God, you believe in His angels, you believe in His scriptures, you believe in all the pillars, so nobody knows this but you. Or nobody knows this with you. It is only you and God who know this. Now you are going to show and to tell this to people. You are going to say this to people, to Muslims, in order to know that you have become now Muslim. Okay? And here it is the state of answering. The state of answering. You are going to strive now. You are going to strive now. And you are going to answer in Islam now. Okay? For example, if you see somebody, you are going to see somebody, for example, and you will say to this body, when you will arrive, when you will be near him, okay, you must see now a Muslim, you must see now a Muslim, and this Muslim, you will say to him that, I testify, يعني كلمة الشهادة, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله So here you are going to say to this one that I testify that there isn't any other girl than girl the grace is the merciful and I testify that Naomi is his prophet I testify that there isn't any other girl than girls, and I testify that Naomi is his prophet. I testify that there isn't any other girl than girls, and I testify that Naomi is his prophet. Okay, so here, this is the witness you are going to, to, you are going to ask somebody to witness you that you have entered in Islam. And you are going to say to this one that I testify that there isn't any other girl than God, the girl is the merciful, and I testify that Naomi is his prophet. Okay? So if you say this, we say that we say that you have entered in Islam and you have now you have become now Muslim. And whatever God will say to do, you are confirmed now. Okay, this is why when God prescribed it, the prayer, but he didn't prescribe the prayer for everybody, but he said that prayer is obligatory for believers, but he didn't say prayer is obligatory for people, but he said that it is obligatory for believers. Okay, and when he pres prescribed it, also the first thing, he didn't say that in chapter number 2, verse number 183, he didn't say that first thing is prescribed by everybody. But he said in chapter number 2, verse number 183, that all you will believe, all you will believe, first thing is prescribed upon you today. Okay, to tell you here that if you are not Muslim, if you are not a believer, you are not concerned of all this, others, of all this or now, the prior, the Hajj, the charity, and so on and so on. Okay? If you are not a believer, so you are not concerned. Okay? After this, when you testify that I, when you say that I testify that there isn't any other God than God, and I testify that Naomi is his prophet. So now we say that you have entered in Islam. Now, what is the question now? The question is that you have you have just entered Islam. Okay? You have just entered in Islam. It means sure that you have just entered in something. You don't know many things in that thing. Because you are a new partner a new member of that thing. You don't know several things. You don't know too much things or too many things. 
in this religion. But you are a new person, you are a new partner, you are a new member of this association. So what will happen here? If we let you like this, you don't know too much things. And uh, this is risky, this is risky. And this is why we support here that you have just you have just got a new car. You have just got a new car and we must insure you against the risk. We must insure you against the risk. Okay? You have just entered in a religion but you have not or you don't know many things in this religion. You don't know many things in this religion. Okay? We are not going to let you like this. But God says that you must pledge your allegiance. You must take your a pledge. You must make your a pledge which will permit you or which will give you during the life of your Islam. Because you have just entered in something when or where you don't know too much think. Okay? And this pledge, after having testified that there isn't any other God than God and Mohammed is his prophet. So here you have to you have to pledge allegiance here. You are going to swear. You are going to swear. Okay? And this pledge doesn't come to me. Doesn't come from me, okay? This pledge doesn't come from me. It is from the Quran chapter number seventeen verse number thirty thirty four. Chapter number seventeen verse number 34. In chapter number 17, verse number 34. In chapter number 17, verse number 34, this is what God says the Surah Al Isra, Ayat to Ayat al Rabi'ah, was the last thing in the Holy Spirit. Well, the Krabu man al Yatim, in Labi Liti, here Achsan Hatta, your blower should. Well, who be the Ahad in the Ahad again, a Masula. ولا تقربوا مال اليتيم إلا بالتي هي أحسن حتى يبلغ شدة أوفوا بالعهد إن العهد كان مسؤولا. So here God says that in chapter number number seventeen verse number thirty four God says that and do not go near the prophet the the orphan's property except with the best of intentions and do not go near and do not go near the orphan's property accepted with good of intentions until he has reached his maturity and honor your pledge because the pledge involves responsibility and honor your pledge because the pledge involves responsibility and honor your pledge because the pledge involves responsibility and honor your pledge because the pledge involves the responsibility. Okay? So here, God says here that you must honor your pledge and the pledge involves the responsibility. You must honor your pledge and the pledge involves the responsibility. How can you explain that God asking you to honor something that you hadn't, you hadn't taken? Have you ever taken a pledge in Islam? Have you ever taken a pledge in Islam? You haven't. So here God says that you must honor your pledge. And the question is what? You hadn't taken any pledge in Islam. But God says here that in chapter number 17, verse number 34, that you must honor your pledge because the pledge involves the responsibility. It means that everybody will be questioned about this pledge. Everybody will be questioned about this covenant okay everybody will be questioned about this pledge so here you haven't taken any pledge but God says that you will be questioned about this pledge to tell you here that you have to have a pledge between you and God and uh, this is the tape about how to become Muslim but I will produce another tape which will be only about the six pledges only about the six pledges in Islam. But I'm going to complete this tape. I'm going to complete this tape 
to tell you or to show you how you must become Muslim. But what is about to do the six bridges, I will let this for the for the next tape or for the next production. Okay? I will produce for you another tape which will be about the six pledges. So in chapter number sixteen, the pledge you have had, the pledge you must have is in chapter number sixty, verse number twelve. In chapter number sixty, verse number twelve. Okay? In chapter number sixty, verse number twelve, the Surah al Mumtahana, Ayat al Sani Ashra. Ayat al Sani Ashra in the Kawli Ta'ala. يا أيها النبي إذا جاءك المؤمنات يبايعونك على أن لا يشركن بالله شيئا ولا يسرقن ولا يزنن ولا يقتلن أولادهن ولا يعصين ببختان يفترينه بين أيديهن ورجلهن ولا يعصينك في معروف فبايعهن واستغفر لهن الله إن الله غفور رحيم يا أيها النبي إذا جاءك المؤمنات يبايعونك على أن لا يشركن بالله شيئا ولا يسرقن ولا يزنن ولا يقتلن أولادهن ولا يعصين ببختان يفترينه بين أيديهن ورجلهن ولا يعصينك في معروف فبايعهن واستغفر لهن الله إن الله غفور رحيم. This is what God says in chapter number 60 verse number 12. O prophet, O prophet. If believing women come to you, pledging allegiance to you, <coughs> on condition that they will not associate anything with God, nor steal, nor commit adultery, nor kill their children, nor commit surgery has to parenthood, nor, <coughs> nor disobey in anything which is right of, so accept their allegiance and, uh, and uh, ask God's forgiveness for them. God is forgiving and merciful, O oh, Prophet. When believing, or if believing women come to you, pledging allegiance to you, on condition that they will not associate anything with God, nor steal, nor commit adultery, nor kill their children, nor commit surgery has to brand hold, nor disobey in anything which is right. So accept your allegiance and ask God is forgiveness for them, God is forgiving and merciful. Okay? So here God says that, O Prophet, if believing women come to you. So this verse involves a lot of points, involves a lot of points to be identified, to be studied, to be clarified. Okay? Because this verse is the consequence or came after an addict. This is also came after an addict. It is the consequence of an addict. Okay? An addict of the Prophet. When the Prophet was among his partners, the Prophet was among his prophets, his partners one day. And he asked them to plead him when sorry, Min Nabi Sallallahu على أن لا تشركوا بالله شيئا ولا تسرقوا ولا تزنوا ولا تقتلوا أولادكم ولا تعطون ببختان تقترونه بين أيديكم ورجلكم ولا تعصوا في معروف فمن وفى فاجره على الله ومن أصاب من ذلك شيئا ثم عوكب في الدنيا فهو كثارة لهم ومن أصاب من ذلك شيئا ثم صدره الله فهو إلى الله إن شاء أفاءنه وإن شاء عقبه فبايعناه على ذلك فبايعناه على ذلك So this hadith reported by Sahih al-Bukhari says that the Prophet when he was among his partners when the Prophet was among his, pra his, uh, his partners so he asked them by saying that Pledge me allegiance on condition that you will not you will not associate anything with God, nor steal, nor commit adultery, nor kill your children, nor commit perjury has to parent court, nor disobey in something which is in anything which is righteous. Okay? 
It is the prefix who was among his partners. This hadith is reported by Sahih al Bukhari. By Sahih al Bukhari. The Prophet was among his partners and he asked them to pledge him allegiance on condition that they will not associate anything with God, nor 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 steal, nor commit adultery, nor kill their children, nor commit perjury as to parenthood, nor disobey in anything which is righteous. And whoever honors this pledge will have his ruah near God. But whoever misses something and after he having been punished in this world, this punishment will be forgiveness for this one. But whoever misses suffers some of death six six pledges and he hasn't been punishing this world so his matter comes back to God. If God will he will forgive him, but if he don't will if he doesn't will, he will punish him. And at the end of this habit, it is now the partners of the Prophet who are saying here. And they say that all of us all of us have become this pledge. All of us I'm speaking now in that place. They say that all of us, all of us have taken the six pledges. All of us have taken the six pledges. Okay? So this is, or this was about the believing men. And after this verse, after this habit, God wanted that. God will do that. The prophet do the same for the believing women. Okay, this was for the believing men. And when the prophet finished with the the believing men, so God asked him to do the same for the for the believing women. This is why God started the verse by saying that if believing women come to you. But he didn't say, tell to believing women or tell believing women to come to you pledging allegiance. But he said, if believing women come to you. So here, it is an application. An application, but an indirect application. And not an direct application. Okay? It is an application, but it's not a direct application. But it is. Uh, in direct or in non direct application. Okay? This is why in the middle of the verse God says that accept their allegiance. Accept their allegiance. Okay? So the six servants here or the six pledges here the six pledges here after you having testified that there isn't any other God than God and that Maomi is his prophet. So here the six pledges are compulsory now for you. Okay? There are an application here for you to take. You must take them. You must take them. Okay? And another found to be clarified because God says that or prophets, but he didn't say all oh, Muslims. So here someone can understand this verse by saying that if God says that all oh, prophets, it is necessary that it is only the prophet who is allowed to receive, who is allowed to accept the six sermons, the six pledges, excuse me for the word. Okay? We can understand here or someone can understand here that it is only the prophet who is allowed to accept the six pledges. Okay? So I say you hear that God says in chapter number three, verse number hundred and forty four. In chapter number three, verse number forty four, verse number hundred and forty four. 
the family of Imran, verse number 144, guesses that if the prophet is died, so the prophet didn't die or wasn't die, isn't die with his son. But the aunt or the thief of prophet is not the thief of Islam. Okay? So if we practice Islam when the prophet was living and God says that we must continue practicing our religion even if the prophet died. Okay? So to tell you here that after the prophet the six pledges can be accepted today because the prophet was the chief and the leader of Muslims but after him after him there were also some leaders there were several or a lot of there were many leaders in Islam the prophet was the leader and after the prophet came Abu Bakr after Abu Bakr came Umar after Umar came Osman and after Osman came Ali and so on and so on to tell you here that the death of the prophet doesn't consist of the death of Islam okay so we can pledge the six pledges even the day okay the death of prophet okay for example if you testify to this one to this letter by saying that I testify that there isn't any other God than God and I testify that Muhammad is a prophet so here you have to tell you have to tell to this one you have to take now the six pledges by saying that I sure that I will not associate anything with God this is the first the second I will not still the third I will not commit adultery the fourth I will not kill my children the, the fifth I will not commit surgery has to parenthood the last one I will not disobey in anything which is righteous the first I will not associate anything with God I will not steal the second the third I will not commit adultery the fourth I will not kill my children the fifth I will not commit surgery has to parenthood the last one, I will not disobey in anything which is righteous. The third, I sure that I will not associate anything with God. The second, I will not steal. The third, I will not commit adultery. The fourth, I will not kill my children. The fifth, I will not commit surgery as to parenthood. And the last one, I will not disobey in anything which is righteous okay so here you have to pledge this allegiance to this one and it is an application and God says that the six pledges involve a responsibility it means here that everybody will be questioned about the six pledges Mr. X will be questioned about if you who are listening to me now you will be questioned about the six pledges and me who I'm speaking here, I will be questioned about the six pledges also. Okay? To tell you here that there are compulsory for everybody, but on condition that you have been you have been a believer. On condition that you have been a believer. Because God didn't say that all prophets when women come to you to pledge allegiance to you. But he said when believing women come to you okay God didn't say all oh, prophets when women come to you pledging you allegiance but he said all oh, prophets when believing women come to you this is why I said to you last time that you mustn't play with the question of faith the question of the faith is the most important and the element the faith is the most important element Okay, because God commissions, God always commissions everything on the faith, on the faith. 
And if you don't believe, you have to know that you are not concerned. You are not concerned of God's Arnold. Okay? So, God didn't say here that if believing or if women come to you, but he said if believing women come to you, to tell you here that if you are not believing woman, you are not concerned. You are not concerned. Only the believing women are concerned. Okay? And it is exactly what the prophet, when the prophet asked his partners to preach him the six prayers, so he wasn't expressing to the disbelievers, nor the idolaters, and so on. But he was among his partners, the believers. Okay? Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman, Ali, Hamza, and so on, and so on. He was among that partners, the first believers. They were believers, and the Prophet asked them to preach him the six servants, uh, the six pledges. Okay? To tell you here that they are compulsory, on condition, on condition that you have been a believer. Okay? So this is the last step. How you might become a Muslim. Okay? How you might become a Muslim. This is the hand. And I will uh, I will produce another another tape. What I will title Mr. Berti coming from Mali. Or the six pledges in Islam. Okay? This tape will be titled Mr. Berti coming from Mali. The six pledges in Islam. Okay? And this is the end of this tape. This is the end of, of this topic. So I summarize by saying that this topic was about how to become or how must we really become Muslim. And we stopped it by showing to you that we weren't born Muslims but we must become Muslims. And I proved this. I have pro I proved this far or by the, the, the some verses such as the verse numbers seventy seventy six on the chapter number seventy six verse number one to three on the chapter number ninety verse number four five six seven eight nine ten on the chapter number sixty six verse number ten and eleven. So I proved this conception by that verse that we weren't born Muslim but we might become Muslims. And after this I showed you how how, how was or what was the beginning of the state, okay, uh, from the, the six pillars of the faith and uh, after you having testified that there isn't any other God than God and that Maomi is his prophet and after you having pledged the six bridges, okay, and this is the end and you must become Muslim like this, okay, so I thank you very much to have followed it. I thank you very much to have followed it and I summarize by saying that you are listening to your brother in Islam, Mr. Dirty Isiaka. Mr. Dirty Isiaka. Mr. Dirty Isiaka. Coming from Mali, the Republic of Mali, the region of Sikasso, the region of Sikasso, the third region of Mali coming from a village, village of Kleda, village of Kleda, far from Sikasso, of 45 kilometers between Sikasso and the Kuchala, Republic of Mali, region of Sikasso, village of Kleda. So you were listening to the student, the student who has not learned to the religion by a teacher. The student who has not learned to the religion by a teacher, the ambassador of the divine kingdom on earth. We thank you very much to have followed it and we promise you to be with you next time. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Maliki yawmiddin. Iyaka na'ubud wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الله نشكرك على ما صفنا إن شاء الله